Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. We are very, very happy to welcome you to our show titled Speak of Africa. What is happening in Africa this week? Okay, we're going to share all of that with you. We're going to talk about Ambazonia, La République du Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Chad, Congo DRC, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Senegal, Sudan, and we'll end in Tanzania. So we have a lot of news stories for you. What is Africa like this week? We try to look at the big stories, but a major story, we're looking at AGOA, Africa Growth and Opportunity Act. This new law came into effect in like 2000, but right now it looks like some countries in Africa have been suspended from AGOA. The purpose of AGOA was to facilitate trade without tariffs between the United States and many African countries. But as we speak, a lot of African countries have been suspended from AGOA, so they are not really benefiting. A part of NEPAD also led to the outgrowth of AGOA. But now, when Trump became president, for example, in 2019, he suspended La République du Cameroon from AGOA. Why? Because he felt the requirement of good governance was not met by Paul Biya's government. So they had to suspend La République du Cameroon. Right now, La République du Cameroon is struggling to be readmitted into this club, but it looks like they will not succeed. We've been doing a very good job painting a true picture of the human crisis taking place in Ambazonia, and the U.S. government is taking note. Whenever we speak, the U.S. government listens because the U.S. government knows we're telling the truth. Okay? So we'll continue sharing the stories. We are your voice, my people. Whatever you're suffering, we take this message of desperation to the big guys all over the world so that they know your plight. So just know that you are not alone. We are supporting you and want the world leaders to know what is happening to you and they will be forced now to take action because we put them to shame. So let's start our news. We really feel sad to start this news with uh, African problems. A lot of migrants have been drowning at sea. We keep saying, please stay at home, don't travel abroad. But there's a lot of brain drain just because Africans are not happy with life in their countries. So they are looking for fertile ground overseas. No matter what we say, because of the economic plight, they are forced to leave their homes. Even though we keep telling stories of war, they don't want to believe these stories. Africans die at sea, yet more Africans want to live. So the issue with brain drain, we're even going to bring it up when we start talking about Nigeria. The National Assembly is already uh, passing new legislation to prevent doctors from living. Is this the best way to fight brain drain? We don't think so. Passing laws, legislating, is not really going to solve a problem. You have to look at the root cause of the problem. Why are the people leaving Africa? They are leaving Africa because of bad governance. If we want them to stay in Africa, then we have to provide good governance. So let's look at what is happening in Ambazonia. This is a very good example of what happens where it, when there is the absence of good governance in a country. For a long time, in fact, even since 2016, the people of Ambazonia have been agitating for a form of self-sufficiency and self-determination. But La République du Cameroon has made it impossible for them to realize their aspirations. They have been treating them as second-class citizens. The matter has really come to a head, and things are really bad. Contrary to what we see on the ground, La République du Cameroon keeps telling people that, oh, the issue with Ambazonia has been settled. It's a lie. This morning, you guys sent out some videos showing explosions and the burning of vehicles in Boya, mile 16. Take a look. Then they kill one person. They say they kill some person. They say that guy, they say, fuck me for the wrong shooting. Mm, my 16 this morning. 
four cars burnt, one person killed. Early this morning, my 16. Boya. Amber boys attacked my 16 this morning. Four cars burnt, one person killed. You see the, the, the vehicles burn, and we hear the Ambazonia Restoration Forces are the ones burning these vehicles. Why? Well, this is telling you that, contrary to what La Réplique du Cameroon is telling you, the war in Ambazonia continues unabated. So it's a lie that they've suppressed all the fighters, they've killed all the fighters. You cannot kill a spirit. You can kill a few guys, but the spirit of revolution reigns in Ambazonia. So by thinking that if you kill some of these guys, you're going to stop the revolution, you're making a big mistake. And we've been asking the poor Bia government to come to the table and negotiate. We know now that the Canadian uh, peace uh, process is dead. It's dead because the government of the Republic is recalcitrant. They don't want to make any moves. They don't want to make peace with uh, the people of Ambazonia. And I think for now the people of Ambazonia understand it, which is why you see them stepping up attacks against uh, Bia's uh, militia and forces. Things will continue this way and we have the video that we've just shown you. You've seen what is happening and people are making noise about it and Life is not going to become, it's not going to return to normal anytime soon. So if uh, the BR regime is fooling you, telling you that things are returning to normal in Ambazonia, it's a big lie. And we're here to tell you this. So the world, get a message from us. We're telling you the truth. A lot has been happening in Ambazonia. Then, of course, another piece of big news is uh, the resignation of Capo Daniel. People have made so much ado about this news and... We are looking at the story. Capo Daniel resigned because of uh, irreconcilable differences between him and um, Ayabacho and other elements. So we don't really have the facts. So we're going to wait, gather all the facts, then we'll return with the information next week. Morning, fellow Ambazonians. Today, na Thursday, number 13 day for this month for April 2023. My name na Capo Daniel, who na own countryman. Ambazonian FBI, Mr. No Kony. Today, I don't come again once more with another episode of our daily podcast, a program where they bring on the truth, meaningful information, fact-based analysis for help we as we work out for this journey to our freedom, to the independence of Ambazonia. But before this and more, I want to congratulate my friend Lucas Asu with the Dr. Cho Lucas Ayaba, he did appoint he as the press as the new spokesperson of the Ambazonia Governing Council. Lucas Asu is a firebrand Ambazonia. We have worked very closely together in many projects within the Governing Council. And even before the Governing Council, I remember when uh, the IG called us to help Seseko to uh, dismiss Sako when Sako was, uh, was kicked out by the cabinet. We helped to push the ACN, the, the APLC conference in uh, America, where Chris Anno famously introduced uh, Bankoe, <laughs> Colonel Bankoe, in our revolution. We also worked very hard to organize the, the Ambazonian conference that was supposed to take place in Canada when we were still independent activists. That conference was supposed to bring all of our leaders together to solve the problems that were emitting after Sako took over for, for Seseko's IG. Yeah, the, the conference was eventually transferred to Canada in Washington, where famously the group with Bo Herbert, they gathered to code knife against Dr. Cho uh, Lucas Ayaba. And since I joined the Ambazonian Governing Council, I have worked very closely with Luca Asu. He's a very motivated person, highly committed person, and somebody who, who is uh, honest, and I believe he is the right person to serve that organization in that capacity. So I want to congratulate Mr. Lucas Asu and wish him well. And hopefully we are going to work in collaboration with our liberation struggle. 
As for me, I have uh, successfully uh, registered, go through the first stages of registering a new platform. As I told you people, I'm going to register a new platform to continue my work for our country because this work for our country is not just for an organization, it's for the country. We can never stop it. So I've registered an official organization which is legal. It is called the African People's Rights Organization. Under the organization, we have, uh, there are going to be sub organizations under because it's focused on campaigning for people's rights across Africa, primarily in Ambazonia. So there will be other sections, chapters that are under this organization, which, be, which will be uh, the, the one that will focus on Ambazonia, will be the Ambazonian People's Right Platform. Then there is also the issue of uh, Belgium. It looks like Ambazonians are gathering in Belgium from the 28th of April to 29th. The European Union is the seat where they are focusing on. They want to protest so that the European Union should know about the plight of Ambazonia. So all eyes are on Belgium. That's what we can tell you. So that's as much as we can tell you about uh, Ambazonia. Next, we we'll move to La République du Cameroon. We're going to show you a whole lot of newspapers. We've watched a lot of newspapers in La République du Cameroon. You can see there are so many newspapers. We've looked at all the headlines. What are the main topics? Well, the main topic remains the succession, political succession, political transition. When is Mr. Paul Bia going to die? Who is going to take over from him? So the Betty clan is really fighting to take over from Mr. Pobia. So you have uh, the Etones, you have the Bulus, and you have the Ewondos. So it looks like uh, everybody is really preparing. People in this uh, clan are really preparing. Each clan is trying to get on board and bring in somebody who will succeed Mr. Pobia. And it seems Mr. Pobia himself is aware of the infighting, and he's trying to take advantage of this infighting. But we are showing you this picture so that you see that all is not well in La Republic du Cameroon. So that's much of what we see, and we are willing to share this with you. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Next, we take you to Burkina Faso. The government of uh, Ibrahim Traore is really trying to garner public support the support of the people against uh, the jihadists. We think playing these political games is like ch uh, tricks, child tricks, a child's tricks. Are this going to work? We don't think so. The government of Ibrahim Traoré needs to come up with jihadists have taken over a very big swath of the country, so he needs to do something to fight this. But you cannot just fight with weapons. Jihadism is not just a physical fight. It's an ideological battle. So you have to fight this ideologically also. By using arms alone, you are limiting yourself. So if you want to fight a war, you need to understand your enemy. So it looks like Ibrahim Tare has not really understood the enemy he's fighting. Just using weapons is not going to win this fight. Just using propaganda, telling the people, join us to fight, uh, mobilizing the people to fight the jihadists, no, that's not how you do it. You, you want to win the hearts and minds. Why is there jihadist activity in Burkina Faso? These are all bread and butter issues. So you need to use carrots. Sit down with these people. They are your brothers and sisters. Don't think that by giving your resources to China and Russia, getting weapons from China and Russia and fighting your own people, you defeat the jihadists. You're going to fail. If you want to win the war against the jihadists, use a more conciliatory approach. Bring them to the table. Make peace with them. Okay? That's what happens. Next, we'll take you to Chad. Not much is really happening in Chad, but we can tell you that there is 
a conflict between two generals in Sudan, and the conflict is spilling over in Chad. So Chad is trying to secure the borders between Chad and Sudan. Okay, next, we take you to Congo. In a few months, there will be presidential elections. That's officially. Felix Shisekedi has already been manipulating to silence his rival, co-opt them, get rid of some of them. But will this make it easy for him to win re-election? We don't think so. People like Jean-Pierre Bemba are with him. Then he is trying to neutralize Martin Fayulu. But he still has other big guys, like Moise Katumbe, that he has to contend with. Of course, Joseph Kabila is also an, an elephant in the room. You don't hear much from him, but his wife, Olive Lembe, is speaking. We've talked about Olive Lembe many times on this show. That's the wife of Joseph Kabila. She's the one who has been criticizing Felix Tshisekedi. Okay? Is she going to be running for president? We don't know. Is her husband just using her as an attack dog? Well, it remains to be seen. <laughs> so we take you to Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, you know about uh, a business that is working very well. Things are returning to normal. After the pandemic, things are returning to normal in Ethiopia. And you can see Ethiopia and Ethiopian Airlines. Travel is picking up again. Ethiopian Airlines flag is flying very high. And people are traveling a whole lot in this part of the world. Ethiopian Airlines seems to be probably the best airline now in Africa. And uh, the people are talking about it. We know a lot of Cameroonians who travel using Ethiopian Airlines right from America here. Uh, so that's good. From Ethiopia now, we'll go to Nigeria. The news in Nigeria pretty much now people are waiting for the end of the Buhari regime. And they are waiting for Bola Tinubu to take over as president. But it looks like this week we saw a whole lot of news about Namdi Kanu, Manze Namdi Kanu, his people of Ibab. They really want Buhari to release him before he leaves office. And they are putting a lot of pressure. Is Mr. Buhari going to budge or is going to be recalcitrant? We think he's going to remain recalcitrant until he leaves office. But Namdi Kanu's people are putting pressure and they are threatening that there will be a doomsday. When people make threats, they always try to make good on those threats. But it looks like Mr. Biya is a, sorry, Mr. Buhari is the kind of guy who, who likes to play tough and he doesn't care about the feelings of his people or their opinions. Then we are also seeing that in the National Assembly, there are new legislations that are being drafted, and this is against uh, brain drain. And the focus of this legislation has been on uh, medical doctors. The Nigerian government wants to stem the tide of doctors leaving the country and going to other countries. But it's a very unpopular law. If ever it becomes law, it's going to be very unpopular because you cannot legislate people's wishes. It is economic necessity. Nigeria is training a lot of doctors, yet these doctors don't want to stay in Nigeria. They are always protesting because of poor pay, bad work conditions. But it looks like the Nigerian government doesn't even listen to them. Finally, when they decide to take the matter into their own hands to travel abroad and settle, say, in Britain, the government wants to make laws to make it impossible for them to travel. This is not going to work. This law is going to fail, okay? So I don't know what the lawmakers are thinking. You cannot tie their hands. You cannot enslave these people. These people are free agents. They, they, they live in a free country. So that's what Nigerian democracy says. If they live in a free country, then they have the right to leave the country and travel abroad and work wherever they want. So if you really want these people to stay in Nigeria, if you're worrying about brain drain, then create attractive conditions. You, the politicians who are in the National Assembly, you leave Nigeria and go abroad, France, Britain, for treatment. If you had good hospitals in Nigeria, you'll be receiving treatment in, in, in Nigeria. So what you need to do is to build better hospitals, create attractive working conditions for doctors. This will make them stay at home and work to help their people. You yourself, you've proven that the hospital systems are not good. If these hospital systems were good, you stay in Nigeria and receive treatment when you are sick. But you always travel abroad because the hospital systems are not good. That's what we see. Okay? So this is what needs to be addressed. And we think 
Bola Tinubu should come in and also look at this a law. We don't want this law to be passed. Because if it's passed, the government will see that this is a stupid law. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense because the doctors will still travel abroad. The brain drain will continue on a bed. So the way to stem the tide of this brain drain is to create attractive conditions for doctors at home. Okay, Nigeria? Have you heard the latest healthcare news? There's been a medical programming breakthrough. Let's go to Ali and Ron for more. Thanks, Seb. A Good Samaritan is offering Alexia HTC, a new EMR EHR to doctors for free. Certainly, this free offer will shake things up in the medical software industry. Alexia HTC is a David pitting itself against the Goliaths, Epic, Surmer, and Meditech, which are old and cost too much money. What happens if you figure out how to build a new EMR EHR on the web for pennies on the dollar? You give it away to the suffering physicians for free. Want to learn more about how these two powerhouse solutions will help you win more business? Schedule a demo below. In just minutes, Alexia HTC can help you access a patient record, enter an order, write a note, prescribe a medication, generate a charge, and create a super bill. Plus, Alexia Care Corporation, the vendor of the new web application, offers full customer service and training support free of charge. Who can beat that? We'll take you next to Senegal. In Senegal, we see that there was a gas project, but the gas project has turned into an albatross. The people were thinking that the gas project would create work conditions, happiness for the people. But instead, it has created desperation and prostitution. The people are not getting the benefit from this gas project. The multinational corporations are the ones benefiting. And besides, because the people don't have any means of survival, the women are turning to prostitution to make ends meet. Is this good? We think it's not good. So Makisa needs to look into this. We're drawing attention to this problem. From Senegal now, we move to Sudan. Of course, you've been hearing a lot about us about Sudan. We had a strong man, Ahal Berhan, who has been co-opting power from the civilians. After Al-Bashi was kicked out of office, he took over and he even overthrew Hamdok, a civilian government. Since then, he has stayed in power. But on Thursday, it came to our knowledge that he had a falling out with another general, and the two of them have been fighting for power. So this weekend, the fighting broke out and matters got into a head. Over 56 people have been killed in Sudan. As we speak, the Arab League and the African Union are struggling to contain this uh, flu. Because it's like a bad flu because a lot of people are dying. Okay. Even Chad is suffering from the influences of this uh, fight. The fighting is going on, and you can see signs. The big news is everywhere. South Sudan is as hell about this problem. They used to be part of Sudan, but now they are on their own. So this is not really good. Finally, we take you to Tanzania. In Tanzania, we are seeing a story of rebirth. After John Magufuli died, his vice president took over as president. And it looks like President Samia Hassan has made a U-turn from the bad policies of her predecessor, John Magufuli. And it looks like the opposition is responding positively to these new changes. And it looks like there's a form of renaissance in Tanzania as President Hassan is making new overtures, trying to do more for the country, t t making a U-turn away from the disastrous uh, policies of uh, John Makufuli. So we think for a change, you can see that a woman is leading a country and doing things better. When we see this, we think it's a sign that things are going, moving in the right direction in Tanzania. We thank you very much for watching our show. Before we end, we're just going to ask you to support the businesses we promote on this show. Support Ayok Tax Service, support businesses that we're creating. And we're announcing that we're going to be creating more businesses. Some of our clients are already kick, kicking off uh, their businesses. They are doing very, very well. So if you have a business idea you want to develop, come to us. We want to help you build this business. We'll even help you write a business plan. We're going to even help you do all the paperwork to register this business. 
in your state and with the Internal Revenue Service. Then we're going to write a business plan and even the policy and procedures. Furthermore, we can even help you to, to develop a marketing plan so you can acquire customers. Because this is the tough part in most businesses. How do we get customers? We've solved that problem and we want to help you. Call me 240-350-1131. Bye-bye. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s, and the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiaHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiaHTC.com is built for HIPAA. Yes, magical one-screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e-prescribing, tight labs integration, multi-office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.